I had a customer come in yesterday and she walks through the door and she goes, you know, holy cow, this place is magic. My name is Aaron John Gregory and I am an illustrator and what I also call a biological cartoonist. So basically, I'm a scientific illustrator that has a training in cartooning as a form of illustration. And I, such as comic books, uh, is kind of what I was trained to make. And so I use that to create images of animals, both past and present with a specialty in marine biology and uh, paleontology. Over the years, I was able to turn that into a successful little t-shirt company called Cotton Crustacean, which we are sitting in the store of right now. This is the first official brick and mortar store here in Pacifica, California. We're located one block from the ocean and it's kind of a dream come true. This was always the goal is to have an amazing flagship store for the company where people could come in and see our products at any given time. Before that, we were always a pop-up company. So we would do big street fairs and events. Now we have a permanent location that's open five days a week. And so it gives us a lot of freedom to uh, sell our goods and meet our customers directly on, you know, face to face. Some of these shirts right here are good examples of drawings I've done for other things. The most special of all of these is the San Francisco Garter Snake shirt here. So every year there's a local elementary school called Ocean Shores. Um, and they have a ocean research program that they do called Oceans 411. And I make a t-shirt for them to help raise money for the program, for this science program. There was a year where they were doing research in the wetlands. And here in Pacifica, one of the things we're known for is we have kind of the strongest natural population of uh, the San Francisco garter snake, which is one of the first species of animals to be put on the Endangered Species Act. This is considered the most beautiful serpent in North America and it actually looks just like that. It's got these blues, it's got these reds. It's incredible looking in the wild. I am a professional Aquarius. So I worked in the aquarium industry for 20 years as a professional aquarium keeper, and then also as a professional aquarium scuba diver. I'm working at both Aquarium of the Bay in San Francisco, where I was basically a, a glorified aquarium cleaner slash legit shark wrangler where we had to handle sharks of very large size, seven gill sharks uh, on the daily. You know, that was part of my, my nine to five job. What is the passion for this and the driving force for me to make this shop and make this clothing line and everything else? And I think I, it's, the sh it's the same thing with any creator uh, or maker where there is a undeniable sense and need to create constantly. And so as a kid, I manifested that a lot in just illustration, drawing, constantly drawing pictures. And then as I got pretty obsessed with marine life and aquatic life as a real young age, I'm, you know, like nine, eight, nine, ten, I started just drawing sharks like crazy. Like that was my thing. I just drew sharks and, you know, every species I could think of out of my memory or uh, I'd have my big books out and I'd copy, you know, Oceanic white tip shark or blue shark looks like this. This is our latest design. This is the, the newest thing I've, I've drawn. This is a ninja lantern shark, which sounds a little bit like a made up animal, but it's not, I promise. No reason I know this is because the woman who discovered this, Vicky Vasquez, works here on the weekends. And it's jet black and it's bioluminescent. It produces its own light through its pores and stuff. So of course, our shirt glows in the dark because you have to do that. But when she discovered it, she's like, well, what do I name the shark? Because when you discover a new species, you get to name it. And so she asked, I believe her nephews, her young nephews, hey, what do I name this jet black, deep sea mysterious shark? And they said, ninja shark. So what we do here with this shirt is we donate a big chunk of the proceeds to Vicky's nonprofit shark lab called the Rogue Shark Lab. And so I went to art school and I went to a comic book art school called the Kubert School of Graphic Art. That's where I trained to be a cartoonist, you know, to be a comic book artist. But then I took that and applied it to science instead. Written by Dr. Helen Scales. So this is the first book I did with her, Spirals in Time. It's all about mollusks. This was 
my first real big book job, what I did is I illustrated the covers uh, and I illustrated all these little interior illustrations like that. That's the venomous cone snail there puncturing a uh, hawkfish. That drawing there, it's got Flight of the Argonauts. And that design here went on to be one of our most popular shirts here at Cotton Crustacean. Inspiration, other than just being a creator and kind of needing to create all the time, the act of drawing kind of weird and bizarre marine life is very close to you know the act of exploring because I'm learning as I'm doing it. I'm learning more and more about the animal every time I, I draw it, I look into it. And so there's a little bit of a sense, almost of an adventure in it, as I'm learning so much about this animal. And then I'm getting to create the animal, and bring it to life on paper with my own bare hands. There's kind of nothing like it, really. The other big inspiration motivation for it is once I've created that, once I make it into a t-shirt design, then I get to share it with someone else. And then I get to see the wonder it instills in that person. And the, then the followed by the avalanche of questions and everything else that they may have. And that is the ultimate thrill for me. Cotton Crustacean at its heart is a clothing brand company. And so what I like to do is create clothing that features animals that many people don't even know anything about or didn't even know existed. And in doing so then, by making that shirt and somebody walking up and going, what in the world is that? Now they're learning something about it. And that to me is almost my service. Like I'm educating people on the natural world, but even more so, people tend to think of prehistory and everything that came before man as like a blur of dinosaurs and that's it. They don't understand how much came on into the earth for hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs ever appeared. And so by creating this clothing company, it also acts as a wearable museum in a way. As a, as a sole service, what we do, we provide amazing natural history themed clothing. We provide a place for somebody to come and get um, inspired, but also get some really cool shirts to wear, you know, that they feel good wearing. And sometimes we'll instill a conversation with other people. That's one of the most common things I hear from my customers is every time I wear your shirt, I get compliments and then people want to talk about what the animal is on my. One of my biggest inspirations for this shop, what I hope to create with this store would be to slowly, but thoroughly transform this t-shirt company and this t-shirt shop into a micro public aquarium slash natural history uh, museum slash just nature discovery center. So I wanna talk about and show richness of our wildlife here. There's something about just be, the idea of it becoming a very small little museum and nature center where it can kind of sustain itself and just exist for the sole purpose of educating and instilling wonder in people maybe you know, making people look at their surrounding natural environment here in Pacific in a whole different way. That's enough motive to keep the doors open and the lights on. I had a customer come in yesterday and she walks through the door and she goes, you know, holy cow, this place is magic. The most unscientific term you could ever come up with, right? Magic. But there is a magic to science in the natural world. It is a feeling of magic. That's why it's so all, in, you know, it's just so engrossing. Um, and I'm trying to play with that feeling and create that feeling and keep that feeling in per perpetuality. I want to be that for science and, and, and that same feeling of magic. Science is magic. How about that for an oxymoron? The miracle of science is magic. <laughs> Yep.